Okay, 9.8, secant and tangent angles. So starting off, we need a definition of secant. I don't know that I've given that to you yet. A secant is like a chord that also leaves the circle. So we've got a chord here. And then the secant would be if we talked about this whole thing. That would be a secant. All right, so a secant is like an extended chord, right? So um, we have some different formulas that we're going to need to take care of first. Um, starting off, we have a tangent and a chord that are touching. So, right, so here's my tangent. Here's my chord. And they make an angle X. The arc that they make is going to be 2 times X. The arc is called the intercepted arc. It's the arc they make. So we could say the angle is 1 half the intercepted arc. Or you could say the intercepted arc, arc is 2 times the angle. Next up, we have two chords, right? Chord number one and chord number, number two. They form an angle, and it's called X. We could also talk about the other angle because they're vertical angles and they're equal. The angle that they make is the average of the arcs that they make, right? So average is one half A plus B. Now also, they don't have to be diameters. They don't have to meet at the center of the circle, but it works if they meet in the center of the circle also, okay? So there's that. And then lastly, we have three different scenarios that all follow the same formula. So you have two tangents, starting on the left, two tangents. So I've got this is a tangent and this is a tangent. And then we're looking at the angle that they form well, the angle that they form is one half the big arc minus the small arc. So you always think the big arc is the one farther away, big minus small. And then we have two secants. Two secants, remember, are chords that are longer. So again, the angle is one half the big minus the small. And then we have a tangent and a secant. And the formula works just the same. We have one half the big minus the small. All right. All three of these scenarios um, have the same formula. And it would be good to remember, I, the way that I always remembered it was, it would be one half the big minus the small. That helped me. Actually, I'll write that down. One half big minus small. Um, that's the way that it makes sense to me. That's the way that I kind of remembered it. So. All right, diving into number one. Um, assume that the lines that look to be tangent are tangent. Okay. So we'll say that this guy is tangent. And then this guy would be a secant. I already said that. So we've got our angle here. We're going to have to use one of the formulas, one of the three formulas on the right side. This one's going to fall into the last one there, the tangent and secant. So this is the big, and this is the small. So it's going to be 1 half 170 minus 90. 1 half times 80, which is 40 degrees. All right, not too crazy once you know the formula. Number two, again, we've got a tangent and a secant. Here's the, oops, here's the big, small, and this time our big is going to be our, our x. So we could say, well, 55 equals, 55 is the angle, 1 half x minus 86. So 110 is x minus 86. And whenever I add in 86, so 110 plus 86 is 196. And we're talking about degrees. All right. Okay, number three. This is an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is half of its arc. 
So say this was 10, this would be 5. So I could say, well, what if I doubled the angle? Then they would be equal. So 19x minus 5 would be equal to 2 times the angle. And to write in words, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, um, what do I want to say this? The one half, the arc, equals the angle. So the arc is two times the angle. Okay. So solving this, 19, 19, x minus 5 is 20, x minus 10. I'll put my x's on the right side and my 10's on the left, so that's going to be 5 equals equals x. What am I supposed to solve for? Solve for x, so there we are. All right, number 4. So here, this is a tangent, and this is a chord. So we had a formula for that up top. I think it was the first formula we talked about. For a tangent and a chord, the angle is half the arc. So I could say, well, 47, that's our angle, is half the arc, so 14x minus 4. I could also multiply by 2, and I think I'm going to do that. Whenever I multiply by 2, I'll have um, 94 equals 14x minus 4. So 98 is 14x, and whenever I divide by 14, I get 98 divided by 14, 7. So there we are. Find the measure of the arc or angle indicated, and then we're supposed to assume that they're tangent if they look like it. So we, well, for starters, we need to find x. This is another inscribed angle, right? That's the right word, right? Inscribed? Yep, inscribed. So again, I could say, well, the arc is one half the angle. No, that's not the correct way to say that. The angle is one half the arc. The angle is one half the arc. So the angle, 12x minus 2, is one half. 22x plus 4. And since that 1 half will go in there nicely, I'll just do that. So 12x minus 2 equals 11x plus 2. I'll move my x to the left, so I'm left with a single x. My 2 to the right, so I'm left with 4. So there's my x equals. And now I'm supposed to find the measure of angle TUV. So I need to plug into that 12x minus 2. So 12 times 4 minus 2. So 48 minus 2, 46 degrees. All right, there we are. Number 6. So we're supposed to find arc SR, and we have this piece down here. Well, we know that the arc there, the orange arc, is 2 times the angle. So I could plug that in and get my orange piece. That's going to be 12x minus 28. Now I have the whole circle listed, so I could add them up and set them equal to 360. So I'll say, well, 12x minus 28 plus 30x plus 10 is 360. So 42x minus 18 is 360. So 42x equals 4, not 4, 378. 378 divided by 42 will be 9. So x is 9. Now finding arc SR, I need to plug back into the formula for it. So I'll have, well, 12 times 9 minus 28. 12 times 9 minus 28 gives me 80. All right. Number seven. Ah, so here we have two chords. 
and we have an angle inside there. So let's look at our formula real quick. It's this middle one. So x, our angle, is one half the arcs added together, right? So it's the, like the average of the arcs. So let's go back down here. So my angle, 69 equals one half, and I'll do the 24x first, 24x plus three, plus 23x minus three. I'll combine up what's in my parentheses. So this is going to be 69 equals 1 half. Um, my plus 3 and my minus 3 cancel. And then 24 and 23 gives me 40, 4, 5, 6, 7, 47. Is that right? Hmm. That does not look right. Oh, I dropped, that should be a 22 right here. So that 47 should be a, what should that be, 46. All right, that looks better. All right, so I'm so I apologize about that. I had this wrong, and that made this wrong. Now, whenever I multiply through by 1 half, I'll have 69 equals 23x, dividing by 23, and I'll have 2 equals x. Nope, not two, three. Good grief. Three. All right, I'm supposed to find the measure of arc ME. So ME is right here. So I need to plug back into its formula there. So 22 times 3 minus 3. So this is going to be 66 minus 3, which is 63 degrees. So let me type that in my calculator just because I've been making a bunch of mistakes. So 22 times 3 equals minus 3. Yeah, 63. All right, last one. This is neat. Um, TWV, TWV, this big thing is 29x plus 23. And we're supposed to find the measure of arc TWV. Okay. Hmm. Well, we've got a tangent here and a tangent here. So we know that we could use the formula one half the big arc minus the small arc, but we don't have the small arc here. It's not written there. Hmm. We could say, well, this is going to be 360 minus the 29x plus 23. Right, because it's it's one piece, and the orange piece is the other piece. Now we could plug into the one half the big arc minus the small arc. Oh, and there needs to be parentheses right there. So I could say, well, seven x plus nineteen equals one half the big arc, twenty nine x plus twenty three, minus the small arc, three sixty minus 29x plus 23. Okay, so we've got our equation here. And so I'm going to start off by distributing this negative. So I'll say, well, this is 7x plus 19 equals 1 half 29x plus 23 minus parenthesis 360 minus 29x minus 23. Now I'll distribute the other negative. Probably could have done that earlier. Oh, well. I'll say 7x plus 19 equals 1 half 29x plus 23 minus 360 plus 29x plus 23. All right, I'll combine like terms over here. So I've got my 29x, my 29x, my 23, my 23, and my negative 360. So, 7x plus 19 equals 1 half. Um, 29x and 29x will give me 58. Is that right? 58, yeah. 58x. And then I'll have 23 times 2 minus 360 will be negative 314. I'll distribute it in my 1 half. So I get 7x plus 19 
equals 29x minus 157. I'll put my x's on the right, so this will be 22x equals 176. Dividing by 22 gives me that 8 is x. Now, back to the original problem, I'm supposed to find MTW, which is 29 minus 29x plus 23. So I'll plug in 29 times 8 plus 23. So 29 times 8 plus 23 gives me 255 degrees. All right, there we are. That might be the longest problem that we have. And so a lot of these, besides that last one, that last one had a little bit of algebra there. A lot of these, the hardest thing that we're going to have is just deciding what formula do we have to use. So I think it would be a good idea to have my formulas or your formulas written on another sheet of paper or a note card so that you can have them out and ready while you're trying to do your homework. So, all right, that's all.